Howdy, with this video, uh, I want to do YouTube video number two and introduce you to two philosophical questions we'll be working with throughout the course. Uh, these are not questions we're going to answer perfectly by any means, but uh, we're going to see how our writers view these questions, how they play with these questions, kind of throw them back at us sometimes, maybe in ways that make you feel uncomfortable. Uh, it's one function of literature is to kind of get us to examine what we believe and whether our actions and thoughts match what we say we believe and things like that. Um, so sometimes when we talk about these questions, you may feel a little uncomfortable. Uh, it's not on per it's not the intention, but it's just part of part of learning and <laughs> examining your ideas and things like that. Um, but we're right here. Um, uh, you might be saying, "Well, why are we doing this now?" Well, the, the reason is this is um, these are kind of the two questions that are going to kind of guide us through the course, and also when we get to the final exam and uh, Oedipus the King. Uh, these are the final exam questions. Discuss Oedipus the Kings in terms of this one question or in terms of that question. So it's kind of good to know ahead of time. <coughs> uh, but again, uh, we're not looking to come up with the perfect answer to, to these questions. People have been arguing about this uh, forever, and we're going to be arguing about it well into the future, right? Uh, but the first question uh, we're going to work with uh, or that we're going to be dealing with throughout the course is this question of truth versus relativism. Uh, can we know truth and live by truth and, and have our lives guided by truth? Uh, or is everything kind of relative? What's true for you may not be true for me. And you're going to hear these anti essentialist phrases in our culture quite a bit if, you, if you're paying attention. Um, you, know, you know, your truth may not be my truth. Uh, and maybe we can come meet in the middle somewhere, or maybe we're just locked in our own versions of truth and not quite uh, able to uh, interact. Uh, what, what's going on there? Uh, is there really truth? Is it all just relative? Um, is there a reality that we can live in? Or is one person's reality just based on their perception and may not be the same for another person? Uh, we've all had that experience where we're talking to somebody and you just kind of realize they're not the same reality I'm in. <laughs> Uh, you know, and how do you deal with that? Do you just accept the other person's reality? Do you reject it? Uh, can separate realities exist at the same time? And what happens when they do? Uh, so some very interesting questions going on there. Uh, if you're into truth, uh, you're probably into knowledge. You go to college to get more knowledge, right? Uh, some commentators have pointed out that sometimes you go to college and you kind of get uh, kind of a, a little bit of an indoctrination. Uh, and you start noticing people's biases. Uh, I'm biased to encourage students to go to college. Uh, where does that bias come from? Is, does it come from my knowledge that education transforms people? Or do I have a little financial interest in people coming to college? <laughs> uh, where does that bias come from? Can we examine these biases? And the more we do, the less knowledge seems so absolute, right? Um, same thing with morality. Uh, if you're into truth and reality, um, you might be you're probably into moral absolutes, something like the Ten Commandments or the Five Pillars or something. Um, if you're more of an anti-essentialist, morality is going to depend more on the context. Do we have to understand the person, the, situ the, the situation the person's in to understand uh, their motivations and whether that's moral or immoral? Or is there even such a thing as immorality anymore? Um, and you can kind of see this battle in our culture, right? Um, whoops. Get back there. Uh, no touching. <laughs> Uh, same thing, we see this uh, playing out particularly with journalism right now. Uh, Donald Trump has done a good idea of uh, marginalizing the mainstream media, uh, the fake news and things like that, to the point, can we believe what we're hearing uh, when we hear what, what used to be called news and facts? Um, do journalists uh, report facts or do they create stories? Uh, same thing with uh, something like a history class. Um, are you getting facts and what actually happened? Uh, or is history told by the winners based on their perceptions? Um, is it based on who's telling the story? Uh, if uh, white males are writing history books, then white males are going to probably be telling us what history is, right? That's probably going to favor white males. Uh, it's been one of the theories, particularly with uh, 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 various, various schools of thoughts in, in education. Uh, so you get to some very interesting questions. Even if you say, okay, I believe in truth. Uh, where does that truth come from? How do you experience it? How do you learn it? Uh, does it come from a deity? Does it come from a book? Does it come from experience? Uh, who decides what truth is? Uh, something like the Bible. A lot of people read the Bible and get a lot of diff much different things out of it. Uh, why can't we read one book and everybody you know, get the same thing out of it? Um, so who decides what truth is? Uh, how, does that, how does the individual determine all this stuff? 
some fascinating questions to get into, no matter what side of, of, of the, the, uh, the question you fall on or tend towards. You may not, you may be kind of being pulled both ways with this, right? Um, it's a very fascinating question, and our, and our writers are going to be playing with this quite a bit, uh, where they might say, okay, here's what we've been told is true. Let's see if that really uh, plays out within the context of a short story or a play or something. Uh, so sometimes if you're feeling uncomfortable with work, this probably because the author might be <laughs> pulling you in a direction you're not normally used to going in or comfortable going in sometimes. Uh, the second question, going wrong way there, is this question of whether we have free will, whether our choices determine our lives, and that's how our lives play out because of the decisions we've made, or whether our lives are determined, determined or limited uh, by certain forces or or, or, or things that we can't control. Um, so certain things uh, like genetics, um, are, the reason you're not a professional basketball player may be because your parents are short and now you're short. <laughs> Maybe you you have glasses and you can't see very well, or uh, particularly for me, I can't dribble the ball without looking at the ball. So I, you know, I was never gonna be a professional basketball player. You could just look at me and go like, no, that ain't going to happen, dude. And I could practice the rest of my life and never be any good at basketball. Um, same thing with class. Is your decision to go to Northeast State based uh, on money? <laughs> How much of your life is based on money? Uh, likewise, for my children, um, they're limited in what they can do because I only make so much money, right? Uh, if they want to go to Harvard or something, I'm like, well, I, you better get a scholarship because <laughs> I don't have the cash for that. Um, does race determine how the culture sees you, how different, uh, how you're treated within the culture? Uh, same thing, born male, female, transgendered. Uh, does that affect how you're treated within our, our culture uh, and, and you know, jobs and, and, and personal relationships and cultural relationships? Um, you don't get to choose that. So uh, some of these some of these things are limiting uh, your decisions and your ability to uh, exert free will over your own life, right? Uh, same thing with biology. Do you control who you're attracted to? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, do you control that your body needs food? You right? may have all these you know, great moral ideas, but all of a sudden, if we don't feed you for three or four days, uh, what happens to that morality? Does biology start taking over and um, this organism you're living within uh, start saying, hey, we got to eat, bro? <laughs> uh, or, you know, then that, that, that's all you think about, right? As Chekhov says, a hungry dog thinks of nothing but meat. Um, same thing with sex and uh, all these other biological imperatives uh, that we may not always have control over or it may limit our ability to exercise free will. Uh, same thing with environment. Uh, if you're raised in a certain environment, how does that affect your ability to uh, make decisions and exert free will? Uh, same thing with culture. Uh, biology in particular, as I get older, I don't choose to get old. I don't choose to have my hair fall out or have to grunt when I sit down in a chair or whatever. Uh, we get older and we can't control that. It's not a choice I'm making. Uh, it, it, it's something that limits my ability to do things. Uh, so it's a very fascinating question. Uh, how much free will do you actually have? And you know, and it's not like it's, you have to go one way or the other. You might be somewhere in the middle, kind of going like, "Yeah, it's, we're, I'm, I'm limited in some ways, but I still make choices." But those choices might be limited. I, you, know, I, you might kind of walk away with kind of an, "I don't know." <laughs> and our authors are going to be playing with the, like, these ideas as well. Uh, when you put these two together, uh, you can get some very interesting literature, uh, very interesting discussions about the literature, right? Uh, if if somebody's very limited. Uh, and doesn't really have free will or control over themselves. How do we apply moral absolutes to somebody who's not really can, uh, doesn't have that kind of control over their lives? Um, can we do that? Uh, it gets to be a very difficult question. We see this particularly with uh, with crime, right? Um, some people argue that you know if you're born in a certain environment and you need the money and you have no other way to make the money, and you know is it wrong to steal? And of course. You get into court and they're kind of going to go, yeah, it's against the law, bro. And, uh, but, whoops, whoops, whoops. How do I get that? Sorry. You can tell I'm not good with PowerPoint. I want to be down here. There we go. There we go. Sorry. Um, but particularly uh, things like that. Like recently, I think it was Lisa Montgomery was the first female executed uh, by the federal government uh, in, in a long time. Uh, if you hear a story, it's just a, a, a 
one, it's a gruesome murder that she committed. Uh, I won't get into the details, which is really, really gross. But uh, but then, you know, her lawyers kind of said, well, wait a minute. She, since it almost literally the day she was born, she was sexually abused, physically abused. She might have had brain damage from all the abuse from her parents and her boyfriends. And, uh, you know, and she had all these emotional problems and psychological problems. Uh, she probably wasn't really uh, operating in the same reality we usually do <laughs> when she committed this murder. Can we really hold her uh, fully accountable for that act? And of course, of course, obviously said yes and killed her. But uh, uh, these questions pop up and it's, uh, it pulls us all these different ways. And uh, that's what we're going to see with the literature. Uh, we're not going to be discussing socialist issues so much in this class, but kind of noticing how the literature and how the authors pull us uh, in different ways with these different philosophical ideas. And they're very complex. And again, we're not going to come up with the perfect answer by the end of class. Uh, but, you know, the unexamined life is not worth living, according to Socrates, right? And, um, and you know, that's kind of what we're here to do. So, um, like I said, sometimes you're feeling uncomfortable with some of the literature. That might be why the, the, the authors are pulling us in ways we may not want to really want to go or feel comfortable with. Um, but we'll see how we uh, work it all out. And again, uh, those are the final exam questions right there. We're going to apply these two ideas probably to Oedipus King and maybe a couple other things we've read in the semester. Um, so make sure it's kind of in the back of your head. And again, you may not, you're not going to come up with the perfect, uh, the, the perfect uh, answer to all this. Uh, it's, it's just something we continue continuously ask each other and continuously uh, do to examine our own lives. But uh, if you have any questions as we work through some of these things, be sure to let me know. Again, this isn't a philosophy class. We're not going to. It's not going to be this that intense. Every single, uh, you know, re response paper or something. Uh, but it's something kind of have good to have back in your mind as we're going through the course. Um, we'll talk to you later. Bye bye.